always take a map. That was one of a dozen notes to self that my wife and I made after a near disastrous canoe trip down Arkansas's Buffalo National River. The Buffalo flows unhindered for 135 miles, without any bridges, roads, fences, dams, or people around. For a day and a half, Belinda and I floated in solitude down this picturesque stream, enjoying the mountains, fishing for smallmouth bass, and absorbing the beauty and quietness of the surroundings. Halfway through the second day, the shallow river, about fifty feet wide, suddenly narrowed to an S-shaped chute about ten feet wide and four feet deep. The water rushed through in a noisy, powerful current. No one had warned us of any dangerous places. The canoe rental agency billed this route as a float trip for families, not a whitewater adventure. We could have taken our canoe out of the water and, with some effort, carried it around this spot, but, after surveying the scene, we agreed to navigate the chute. The only hazard appeared to be a large stump, about three feet in diameter, the remainder of a tree on the bank of the river. The soil had eroded around it, leaving an enormous root system hanging down. We needed to enter the chute, evade the stump, and negotiate a ninety-degree turn. Then we would be back on a wide and gentle part of the river. It looked like fun. We entered the chute, but found the current so swift that we were unable to steer. We crashed into the roots. The impact knocked Melinda down into the canoe. We were unharmed, but the bow of the canoe had lodged in the roots. As we tried to pry it loose with our paddles, without warning, the canoe turned sideways in the fast stream and capsized. Both of us spilled into the rapid flow with a lot of debris. All our possessions floated down the river. The canoe wedged sideways in the root system, held there by the powerful stream. Suddenly, a huge piece of the tree broke loose and fell on me, pushing me to the river bottom. I thought I might die. The current finally pushed the stump off me, and I surfaced. The canoe broke loose from the roots, sending Melinda downstream, pinning her leg against a protruding log. A canoe full of rapidly rushing water held her tight. She thought her leg was breaking. We struggled to move the canoe enough to free her leg. She was uninjured except for bruises, but the strong current still trapped our canoe fast against the log. Miles from civilization, we did not know where to find help. With excruciating effort, we turned the canoe enough so that the water worked with us, straightening it out. We beached the vessel emptied it, pounded out a dent created by the log, and gathered our remaining gear.